there, and welcome to this month's Team Brief podcast. Today I'm in the newly refurbished Emergency Decisions Unit, which has now reopened. The main function of the EDU is to try and ease capacity in our emergency departments and improve patient flow. The team decide whether or not a patient needs to be admitted into hospital. They take all ambulatory assessment patients and all referrals with a view to reducing capacity, provide a single point of access and to try and reduce hospital admissions. This facility, which is based behind the emergency department at Preston, is a vital resource for us all, particularly at the current time when our hospitals are already full and we're entering a very busy winter period. As we're so busy at the moment, the executive team will be visiting wards and clinical areas to see how we're all doing. It's vital that you and your team make sure you embed the Perfect 10 initiative into your working practice. You'll remember that the aim of the Perfect 10 initiative that we introduced earlier this year was to make sure that no patient spends a minute longer in hospital than they need to. We made changes to how we work to improve patient flow and this created capacity so that patients could be cared for in the right environment and people needing planned procedures could be treated on time. Working differently also created more time and space to care and since then we've been embedding the changes we made so we have good patient flow every single day so we want to have the perfect 365. We're far from it at the moment but the executive team will be looking at how the changes that we've been making are working in practice and whether any other actions are needed. You need to ask yourself these three key points consistently for every patient. There is more information about what you can do on the written version of Team Brief. Please make this a priority in your working day and make sure the message is embedded within your team or department. It is so important, especially at the moment, while our hospitals are full and the busy winter period is upon us. Now, on to some great news. We've recently been named as winners or shortlisted for a number of awards. Three of our nurses have won a Nightingale of the North Award for consistently going the extra mile for our patients and their fellow colleagues. Two of our clinical tutors have been ranked in the top six most inspirational teachers in the North West in an award voted for by medical students from Manchester Medical School. Our senior research midwife, Katrina Rigby, has been shortlisted for a National Research and Innovation Award for her fantastic work in raising awareness about clinical trials and reducing the number of stillbirths. Kat Lemoon from Medical Illustration has been handed an award at the Institute of Medical Illustration's Awards Banquet for her outstanding contribution to the profession. Our domestic service team has been shortlisted for a Golden Service Award for their dedication to cleaning services and our car parking team are one of the first in the country to receive a new accreditation for leading the way in car parking professionalism and setting standards nationally. It's absolutely fantastic that we are winning and being shortlisted for so many awards, despite enduring an extremely challenging period. If you're entering an award or you've been shortlisted or won an award, please let our communication team know. They can promote your achievement. I've written a CEO comments about our recent awards and there are more details on there. Please have a look at it. I'm sure that you will feel as proud of your colleagues as I do. OK, now an update on our master plan. Over the past couple of months, many of you have been involved in shortlisting potential options for how our hospitals can be configured in the future to deliver services in a more effective and sustainable way. Now this phase of the process will be completed this month and then we'll begin some really detailed work to cost and further assess the shortlisted options before we go on to consider the next steps. In the meantime, work is continuing to develop the new model of care that separates unplanned and planned care and develops more transitional out of hospital care so we're able to progress the changes that we need to implement to make sure we organise our services more effectively and improve pathways. The new operational management structure is also progressing, which will be aligned to this new model. And to help us implement changes to how we work, Suzanne Hargreaves, our operations director, is here with me now to talk a little bit more about the restructure. We have been reorganising the divisional management structure to align how we work to clinical services, patient pathways and flow. This new structure creates fewer but more senior general managers and a number of service managers. We believe the new structure will enable the general managers to work closely with clinical colleagues to lead the teams, develop business strategies, manage performance and ensure we're providing the highest standards of care in the most effective way. Having managers aligned to the service areas will provide additional focus resources to make sure the service runs smoothly. 
With any major restructure, we consult with the staff affected about what we're trying to achieve and how they'll be affected. It's important that the staff involved have time and space to consider the proposals as we work through the changes. We're now at the stage where the consultation has closed and we're appointing people to the new roles. The new structure will be published very soon. Newly appointed staff will be making it their priority to meet with the teams to explain how the new structure will work and how this will affect working at departmental and ward level. We're also now working with clinicians to make sure all our structures are aligned. Thanks for that Suzanne. Now just a quick word regarding Monitor. Myself, Suzanne and a number of other executive directors had a really positive meeting with Monitor last week regarding our financial situation and they've expressed confidence that we've got the right approach and skills to balance our books. We must continue to focus on driving change and implementing savings plans so that we can remain in control of our own finances and our future. Please look out for the CEO comments coming soon for a much more detailed update. And while we're talking about money, Monitor and the Trust Development Authority propose to introduce caps on the total amount that NHS trusts can pay per hour for agency staff. The objective of setting the cap is to bring agency workers' pay into line with substantive workers' pay and will apply to all of those working in our organisation on agency contracts. The price cap for each agency staff role has been set out by Monitor and it's been calculated by adding a percentage to the maximum NHS national pay rate for substantive roles. This proposal is subject to a national consultation process which ends on the 13th of November and we expect the first stage to be introduced 10 days later because we don't anticipate the proposal will change as a result of the consultation. Subject to monitoring, the cap rates then reduce in two further stages so that by the 1st of April 2016, capped agency rates will be equivalent to national NHS pay rates for substantive staff. The proposed rules on price caps will apply nationally to all trusts and all trusts are required to ensure implementation of the new caps by the 23rd of November. Now, all managers now need to assess how the agency cap will affect your department and you need to understand the impact that the cap may have on the workforce so that appropriate action can be taken to mitigate any effects before the 23rd of November. If you'd like to discuss the effect of these changes with a member of the HR team, please contact one of the HR managers as a matter of urgency or alternatively, if you'd like to discuss recruitment into one of these posts on a more permanent basis, please contact Debbie Tickle or Lisa Eccles. Now, let's take a look at our performance figures. So far this year, we've seen 37 cases of C. diff, which were attributable to the hospitals, three below our year-to-date objective. Reviews of those have been completed for 35 cases, of which 10 were deemed avoidable due to lapses in care. We also achieved our target for the 18-week incomplete pathway standard for September and we got really good scores in our patient experience friends and family test. Great achievements. Unfortunately, we missed our target for the four-hour standard for our emergency departments in October because the hospitals are full. However, we are still above our year-to-date target. We achieved seven of the nine cancer standards in September. At the moment, it looks as though we haven't quite achieved such a good performance for October. Early indications show that we've only achieved three of the nine standards. Again, performance in this area will be affected when our hospitals are so full, but the figures are subject to validation and they may change. So have you had your flu jab yet? Extra clinics have been put on and jabbers are visiting different departments to make it easier and more convenient for you to have your vaccine. It is so important to protect our patients as well as ourselves and our loved ones from flu throughout winter. Please do make sure you have your jab. There's more information on the flu intranet page. The Education Department is currently undertaking a review of all the training that you're required to do. The aim of this review is to ensure that the training is relevant to your role and delivered in the most appropriate way. The first stage of the review will affect the taught lecture room based mandatory training sessions. From next January, these sessions will be reduced from half a day to two hour sessions to help reduce the amount of hours of training that staff need to undertake each year while enabling us to meet our training commitments. And finally, just a reminder that you have until the end of this month to fill in the staff opinion survey. 
Your feedback is vital to ensure that changes can be made to improve things for you, your colleagues and our patients. So please make sure you complete the questionnaire. Response rates are now being sent to departmental heads on a weekly basis. Your answers are anonymous. The closing date is Monday the 30th of November. So thank you for watching and a big thank you to the team here at the Emergency Decisions Unit for allowing us to be here today. Please join me again next month for another update.